Hello everyone and welcome to Box Office Receipts. I'm your host Tyler Callahan and there is a good amount of news to go over. We have multiple new releases at the box office, a check-in on how Ant-Man is doing, streaming updates, and other news from Hollywood. Let's start with the domestic top five. Staying in first place for the second weekend in a row is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania with $31.9 million for a total of $167 million. Opening in second place is Cocaine Bear with $23.2 million. Opening in third place is Jesus Revolution with $15.8 million. In fourth place was Avatar The Way of Water with $4.8 million for a total of $665.4 million. And in fifth place was Puss in Boots The Last Wish with $4.1 million for a total now of $173.4 million. For other domestic updates, Magic Mike's Last Dance is at $23.1 million, 80 for Brady is at $36.5 million, and Knock at a Cabin is at $33.9 million. Let's start with Ant-Man, which had a terrible drop of 70% from its opening weekend. While this has become a trend for the Phase 4 films, where the drops are bad on the second weekend, uh, Ant-Man beat them all. The bad word of mouth is clearly affecting it, and at this rate, thanks to the flood of new films in March, it will probably pass 200 million, um, and that's that's gonna be it, really. You know, maybe there is the hope if there was good legs, maybe 240, 250 million. That's gone. I do hope Marvel Studios and Disney take this as their warning to improve future MCU movies. But enough about Ant Man. Let's talk about new films, uh, both of which did better than expected. From Universal, Cocaine Bear surpassed projections and did better uh, than expected. I mean, not much else to say. Uh, What helped is overall pretty good reviews, uh, and as a premise, it is something new. Now, something to keep an eye on here is that this did get a B- as as a cinema score, so word of mouth could be a little shaky, but with an estimated budget of around $35 this will most likely turn into a small hit for Universal. The other film was Jesus Revolution from Lionsgate, which also came in above expectations, This one is not too surprising, as faith-based films do have a strong support base. It also received an A-plus cinema score, so just about everyone that went to see it loved it, and will have great things to say about it. Between this and Plane, Lionsgate is building a pretty decent 2023 so far, as they wait for John Wick. Opening in first place in China is the Hong Kong courtroom drama film called A Guilty Conscience, with 8.5 million. The second place is The Wandering Earth 2 with 7.5 million for a total of 581 million. Third place was Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Media with 7.1 million for a total of 32.2 million. In fourth place was Full River Red with 5.6 million for a total now of 662.4 million. And in fifth place was Boonie Bears Guardian Code with 3.9 million for a total of 211.9 million million. So the Chinese box office is now in a quiet period, as no movie right now, local or Hollywood, is doing big numbers. As for Ant-Man, it had a 63% drop compared to its opening weekend, which is actually a bit better than its domestic drop. It's just not making much in China at all. As for another Hollywood film getting approved for release, the Super Mario Bros. film has been approved and will open April 5th. I think this is a wild card in how it'll perform at the box office. On one hand, it's Mario, and there are definitely Nintendo fans in China. But the box office in general has been quiet besides Chinese New Year, and the only Hollywood film recently to get some excitement was Avatar. Really, for Super Mario Bros. to succeed, it needs to play like a family film in China and get a lot of families to watch. Looking at international numbers, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is having the same problem overseas, with it only making $46.4 million for a worldwide total of $363.6 million. While passing half a billion still seems likely, we can confirm it will make less than Ant-Man and the Wasp. The likes are just not there. Cocaine Bear made $5.3 million for a worldwide opening weekend of $28.5 million. Magic Mike's Last Dance made another $3 million for a worldwide total of $48 million. Babylon made $1.2 million for a worldwide total now of $61.9 million. A Man Called Otto is now at 103.5 million worldwide. Uh, Puss in Boots The Last Wish is at 442.5 million worldwide. And Avatar The Way of Water is at 2.26 billion worldwide. 
We are starting off the news in Hollywood with sad news, uh, and that is Tom Sizemore has passed away. As you may remember, we talked about the news a few weeks ago when he had a stroke that caused a brain aneurysm. He was 61 years old. May he rest in peace, and my thoughts and prayers go out to his family during this terrible time. We got our first look at the new Haunted Mansion movie from Disney. It looks okay, uh, but nothing stood out as amazing. Maybe the second trailer will show more. It comes out July 28th. Also got a trailer from Paramount for the upcoming uh, animated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie called Mutant Mayhem. It comes out August 4th. And Paramount also announced a release date change for another upcoming animated film, Paw Patrol The Mighty Movie, the sequel to the first film that came out back in 2021. It was set to come out October 13th, but will instead come out on September 29th. For casting updates, we have an exclusive from Deadline, uh, Nosfatu, and that is Aaron Taylor Johnson has joined the cast. This really has become a really great cast. It also includes Bill Skarsgård, Nicholas Holt, Emma Corrin, Billy Rose Depp, and William Dafoe. Deadline notes that filming for the film is already happening. Uh, no word, though, on a release date yet. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, Edgar's has been doing great work. We have a few new movies in development this week. The first comes as an exclusive from Deadline, and that is Legendary is moving forward with a Detective Pikachu sequel. They have signed on Chris Galetta to write the script, and Jonathan Crisco is in talks to direct. As for Ryan Reynolds coming back as Pikachu, that is not confirmed yet, uh, with Deadline just saying that he is expected to be a part of the movie in some way. As someone who was a big Pokemon fan as a kid, I thought Detective Pikachu was a bit underwhelming. Not bad, but it wasn't a great movie, and I it wasn't a big hit of nostalgia either for me. So it's just kind of okay. I'm hoping the sequel will be better. In another exclusive from Deadline, there is a new film in development with The Weeknd making his uh, film acting debut, if you don't count his cameo in Uncut Gems. As for what the film is about, we don't know, but we do know The Weeknd, or Abel Tesfre, uh, co-wrote the script, with Trey Edward Schultz, uh, with Schultz directing the film. Besides Tesfe, the cast also includes Jenna Ortega and Barry Keenan, with production already underway. Overall, this is a solid cast, and even without knowing what it's about, I'm looking forward to watching it. One thing I noticed in this report that was missing was a studio that was going to distribute it. I take it that they were going to make it first, and then sell the distribution rights at festivals. We also had some awards over the weekend with both the Independent Spirit Awards and the SAG Awards going on. For the Spirit Awards, there were not really any surprises as Everything Everywhere All at Once dominated the film side, winning Best Picture, Best Director, Best Editing, Best Screenplay, Best Breakthrough Performance for Stephanie Sue, and Best Lead Performance for Michelle Yeoh. As for other films, Tar did win for Best Cinematography. As for the SAG Awards, the results were just about the same with Everything Everywhere All at Once, winning for Best Performance by a Cast, Outstanding Performance by a Female Actor in a Leading Role, Outstanding Performance by a Female Actor in a Supporting Role, and Outstanding Performance by a Male Actor in a Supporting Role. We start off VOD Premium with Paramount Plus, where they have announced that Star Trek Discovery is coming to an end. The upcoming fifth season will be its last, and it also has been pushed back to a release sometime next year. If Paramount Discovery was the first big Star Trek show for them to get the ball rolling on what is now multiple Star Trek shows on Paramount+. Plus. For Showtime, they have announced that Damian Lewis is coming back to Billions for Season 7. The former co-lead of the show left at the end of the fifth season after his wife passed away. As for his comeback in Season 7, it will not be a full return and is expected to be in half of the season. I hope he's doing okay, as he understandably had to take a break from everything after his wife died. For HBO Max, it looks like the Dune show is hitting more production issues. As for Dune, the sisterhood of both the director, Joanne Rennick, and one of the lead actors, uh, Shirley Henderson, have left the project as it now goes into a pre-scheduled hiatus. Between this and one of the showrunners leaving last year, I would not be surprised if at some point this year they cancel the show. A lot of creative differences makes it sound like they don't know what they want to do with it. As for HBO proper, they released another trailer for the fourth and final season of Succession. It still looks great, can't wait to watch it, and it comes out March 26th. For Amazon Studios, a new action comedy is in development called Grand Death Lotto. It'll be directed by Paul Feige, 
and stars Aquafina, John Cena, and Simu Lu. Production begins next week, and from the sounds of it, it will head straight to Prime Video. Pretty solid cast, so as long as there's some good jokes in it, I'll give it a watch. On the Nielsen streaming charts for the first week of February, Black Panther Wakanda Forever shot up to first place, raking in 2.2 billion minutes uh, during first place on the chart. Also worth pointing out that The Last of Us continues to grow with it in fourth place on the chart with 1.1 billion minutes, up from over 800 million before. Taking a look at Netflix, we have an exclusive from Variety, and that is that they have a new show in development. It is a limited series conspiracy thriller called Zero Day. But the reason why it's interesting is that Robert De Niro will star in it, his first TV series. De Niro in a thriller show I think might be worth a watch. Another actor getting into shows for the first time is Arnold Schwarzenegger. He is starring in an action comedy show called FUBAR, with the first teaser released this week, with the show coming out May 25th. And in another exclusive from Variety, they are reporting that All Quiet on the West Front has slowly become a hit for the streamer, with it now at 150 million hours watched since its release last October. I think all the awards buzz it's gotten has helped, and if you're interested in war movies, definitely give it a watch. Facing increased competition internationally, Netflix has lowered the prices of its subscriptions in 100 markets around the world. Some of the countries included are Cuba, Iraq, Libya, Malaysia, Croatia, and Slovakia. And finally, if you are looking to watch Puss in Boots The Last Wish on streaming, it will be available on Peacock starting March 10th. And that is it for this episode of Box Office Receipts. As always, you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Links to those are in the show notes. Thank you for listening.